I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Hey folks, here we are back again. Uh, I'm working on my Escapade 61, and right now I'm soldering up a TDMX. Um, this will be going as the second receiver into the Escapade 61, which has got an RB35S. It's got a TDMX installed in it currently, and I'm adding a second one for redundancy. Um, so, right now we are just uh, soldering up the, the header, and this is going to be a straight F-bus configuration, no, which is the simplest wiring you can do with the, with the TDMX. That's uh, th three wires, very, very simply. The first three pins, G, G, V, and S, P. I'm gonna just do these one at a time to make sure they go in there right. And that we get no, uh, you know, short circuits or anything like that. Now these are tiny little holes. <coughs> so I'm actually not pre-tinning. You know what, I'm gonna pre-tin. Never mind, I'm gonna pre-tin this one. See if I can get it to go in there. Got to be a little careful on this because tiny pads, tiny wires, tiny holes, and reasonably powerful, a reasonably powerful uh, soldering iron. It's I got a Ryobi uh, cordless unit, which is actually really nice. And yep, I managed to make the tip to uh, make the tip of the wire just a touch too thick. So we'll see if we can get that down there so it'll go in. And yeah, it doesn't really want to go in there. This is the one problem with the with dealing when you pre-tin is sometimes you just get it just a touch too big for the hole. And you have a heck of a time getting everything together. So I'll be smart, and when I get to the uh, signal wire, I'm just going to shove it through and then solder it all up. Okay. Where did I put my nippers? Let's see if I can just trim that back a little bit. See if it'll go in. Nope. Okay, we're gonna have to do this the bad way. Let's put a little bit of more. We're just gonna trim this wire back. Let's put a little bit more strain on the wiring loom because the wires are now not the same length. But we can adjust for that later. And by the way, this wire that I'm using here, this is just one of the pre-built uh, FreeSky uh, telemetry headers uh, that come with some of the receive with some of the sensors actually. And I've just nipped one of the male connectors off of it, and I'm using it as my uh, as my wire. Oh. And now I've got a bridge. I just bridged that gap there, so we cannot use this as it is. I have just made a mistake, and I've got the two power pads now shorted, and now they're cleaned up. You can just pull a little bit of little bits of solder off there with the uh, with the tip of the soldering iron, and that'll help. And now I got to go get my loop and take a close look and make sure I've got no whiskers. 
So this is my loop. This is an old jeweler's loop that I inherited from my grandfather, who was a, a watchmaker. And let me make sure that, yep, we're all good there. Now, let's just clean up these. And yes, my hands are a little uh, glue covered because before I was doing this, I was gluing the canopy on the escapade, just doing all the final, uh, little final assembly bits on the escapade, the one by one. Got the throttle set, the throttle throw set, and I uh, put the um, put the muffler on, glued the canopy on, put the main landing gear on. It's now fully assembled. The last couple of items are all electronics install. Um, and then it'll be ready for Maiden. Or at least to do a final uh, check at the, uh, at the field. Make sure that I don't have anything unexpected going on there before I put it up in the air. And since this is largely new hardware to me. Um, not the TDMXs, but I have flown TDMXs before. I was flying my Jetfire 20 uh, with a TDMX and an Aura 5 Lite uh, last year. Uh, that was a combo I was not particularly enthused about. Not really because of the, uh, the TDMX side of things. I just didn't get along with the Aura, to be honest. Uh, whoops. Oh, crud. Now we've gone and done it. Ah, there, got it off. Just polish up that tip. And soldering is fiddly careful work. Uh, one of these days, I have, I have a clip-on magnifier somewhere for my um, my glasses. So uh, again, for my grandfather's jeweler's tools or watchmaker's tools. And I really do have to locate it so that I can so that I can get a better close-up view when I'm doing these. And that looks good. My glasses down there. Um, yeah, that's it's right. It's not the best solder joint. It's a little bit heavy on the solder, but yeah, it's not. I'm going to just see if I can get a little bit of that, of that solder off there. Yeah, I need to polish that tip. It just doesn't want to pick up solder right now. That's about as good as we're going to get it. Hey folks, welcome back. Um, this is just an addendum to the uh, wiring video. So I've got the TDMX here all wired up. There's one thing that still needs to be done before it's ready to install, and that's heat shrink. Now these receivers come with a short section of heat shrink that you can just pop over and uh, shrink it down yourself, but there's reasons why you may uh, have to source some yourself. Either you're, you've had to cut the, cut it off because you're rewiring the receiver, or some other reason. So I, in this particular case, I misplaced the heat shrink. I'm not sure what I did with it. It had, uh, it had wandered off in the probably nine months I've owned this receiver, and I've had it out of the case a couple of times, done some photo photography with it, um, and a couple other bits. So I had to go out to my electronic supply shop, which is Sale up in, uh, up in Markham, Ontario. Uh, they're a great place where I buy solder, electronic components, wire, uh, basically everything I need from an electronics perspective for the hobby. Uh, I usually go there first. Uh, word to the wise, when you're buying stuff like solder, like wire for wiring looms, um, if it's two conductor in particular, or um, or heat shrink, 
or components like that, don't go to the hobby shop. Do yourself a favor, go to an electronics supply or an electronics hobbyist supply. You will get a better selection and you will probably get better pricing too than your local hobby shop. Big fan of supporting your local hobby shop, but sometimes you just have to go to the right store and it's not always the hobby shop. So I've got this, I've chopped uh, probably, let's see, how, how long is this? Um, it's an inch and a half section of three quarter inch uh, clear. And I recommend always using the clear for this. Uh, the, the black has some carbon pigment in it and that can impact, uh, that has an RF impact don't use the ever use the black stuff in on your um, antennas and such unless it's specifically RF safe. You can get non-carbon black pigment black heat shrink, but you got to go looking for it. Um, for stuff like you know your battery wiring, it doesn't matter. But around the receivers, I like to be particular. The other piece is, is this way you can see the receiver when it's done. I'm just going to pop this on goes over the wire down there and we are going to heat shrink it and you can see just as a note I'm so glad I actually got around finally to investing in a heat gun I used to heat shrink with the back edge of my soldering iron. Not a really great way to do it. This works so much better. And we don't have to worry about stuff becoming crispy critters. So there's one last thing I'm gonna do on here. That's just because there is a little button there. So, see there's a little button right there and to make sure i'm just going and watch out because this stuff is not low temperature at the moment that is a warm heat gun it is not your wife's hair dryer but an actual heat gun and i'm just giving this a little bit of relief so that goes click and it's not being pushed down you don't actually have to pull it off there. You just need a little bit of relief so you're not accidentally pressing down the registration button. And so that when you do need to press down the registration button, you can get at it. So there, there you have it. Um, all ready to go. The next step will be I'll throw some servo tape on this side. It'll go, it'll go into the back of the, um, of the escapade. And I've got a nice long lead here, so it'll make it all the way over to the RB25 without a need for extension or anything else. Um, and yeah, if you noticed, I've got little marks here. I had noticed that I was going outside. I put little marks in, I'm just going to. Because <laughs> if you are watching the earlier one, or the earlier half of this video, you noticed that I kept getting the receiver outside of the area here. So I've just, drew in a little set of reminder marks for me so that uh, I don't do that in the future. I chose and then I can just zoom in to the marks and now when I record I know I'm inside the video without having to look up. So a little bit of a learning thing there. I'm, rel I'm still am relatively new to this YouTube thing so I'm learning as I go. Uh, trying to do every each video just a bit better than the one before. So, thank you, and now you have how to wire a TDMX for FBUS for use in, say, an RB25, RB35 setup, or direct to a FBL, like a Spirit or an MSH Brain 2, uh, where you want, uh, where you want uh, FBUS in, single wire, telemetry, and control, full 24 channels. It's the way to go. And, don't do S bus plus S port unless you're plugging it in to something that only supports S bus plus S port or only supports S bus. Uh, 
I'm going to do up a TWMX uh, in the very near future with S++ S port because that's going to be set up for a, uh, an install with a Flex Aura 5. Uh, I'm going to put one of those. I think it's probably going to go into my little RV7 as a replacement for a SR6. Uh, I'd like to, I've got the Auras. They're good units, though I have found them a little frustrating to get trimmed out the way I wanted. So, uh, my RV7's a test bed these days, uh, and it's going to, uh, it's going to be used for me to learn how to tweak an aura. Always learning. One, uh, love to learn. It's one of the things I love about the hobby, and it's the one of the things I do to keep growing. Try something new. Stretch yourself. I got my first gasser engine uh, over the weekend, and that's going to be a project uh, that'll come up soon enough. Uh, 20, older 26cc gasser, that'll go into test bed airframe. I'll put a gas suite in it, probably put another RB35S in it, and we'll see about, might even break down and buy some exact 5401s uh, so that we can go all F bus everywhere in that setup. I haven't decided on the airframe right now. Leaning towards either a um, Hangar 9 uh, Tiger 30cc, which should fly nice on 26cc the way I like to fly it. It'll be a bigger escapade basically. Or I might go for a Robin Hood 80 from Old School Model Works and build it up. Gripping hand is, can always put it on a stick. Gotta love a stick.